Hey, Richie, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you. Nice to finally meet you. Yes, and nobody has a perfect setting like you you have. <laughs> and uh, we are here at FinTech, uh, FinTech Week. We have all these speakers and CEOs and founders from all over the world, and nobody was thinking about something like you created here. Well, I'm very fortunate to be living in this area because actually this is my area. And when I tell Dubai, you, right? I live, yeah, so I'm based in Dubai, clearly. But, but specifically in Dubai, people, you know, I live in, it's called downtown Dubai. And, and this is home to the world's tallest building, Dubai Mall, and, and, and just kind of luxury at its finest, what people think of Dubai. So I'm very fortunate to be here. So when I walk out of my house, this is my view. It's, it's, wow. That's my view. So it's really, really, it's really. Uh, it's a, a real view, not, not a Zoom background. It's, it's a real view over there. It's a live view. And apologies for the traffic because obviously I live, this, it's in front of the main boulevard in Dubai. So hopefully you can hear me properly. Yes, I hear you. I hear you very good and uh, very, very excited to have you. And we will talk about the FinTech Times and you're covering this area. So I guess you have, a, you have met so many companies and banks and FinTechs from the, the region. I'm speaking uh, here from Israel. This is uh, the first FinTech week for Israel, the UAE, Bahrain. Uh, and people are watching us from all over the world, actually. And I know the FinTech Times is covering FinTechs and banks all over the world. We were partners on, on the FinTech Nation Summit in September. So I know you, you guys are very good and Jason and everybody. But yeah. before we dive into uh, uh, the FinTech Times and everything you do, I want you to tell us about yourself even before that. Give us your background. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Nir. And hi, everybody. So. So people know me as an economic development expert. Uh, so so I, I, I was, I'm from the US, but this complicated background, which could be like this whole different session. But essentially what, I, what I've been doing was living around the world. And I spent the last seven years in London uh, working for a, a major management consulting firm out there. And then I left the job in 2018. And then I slowly settled in Dubai. So, so uh, I have a few hats. But one hat I have obviously in front of you today is uh, I'm the head of the Middle East and Africa section for the FinTech Times, as well as the head of Middle East and Africa for FinTech Power 50. So what is the FinTech Times for those that don't know? I think, I think most people who'd be watching this would know, but we're the world's oldest uh, newspaper dedicated exclusively to FinTech. We were founded in 2016 in London and we're currently headquartered there. And we cover all aspects of FinTech and its glory. So. So all the sub sectors and everything that's happening around the world. Uh, we have a very strong section in Europe, obviously, our, 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 our foundation, our main base. We also do a lot with Asia, Singapore, Hong Kong, the rest of China, um, and, and obviously as well with North America, the United States, Canada. But until the summer, we didn't actually have a, a very active Middle East and Africa section. It was very much secondary. So actually this summer we launched it. And, and we made it at par with the rest of the regions that we, we focus on. So we've, uh, with me kind of spearheading it here with the team in London, we've started exploring all aspects of, of FinTech in the region um, that, the same way we do it with the rest of the other sections. And also with the FinTech Power 50 hat, it, think of it as an accelerator plus. So separate from the FinTech Times, it's kind of, uh, we, we look at the 50 most prominent companies in FinTech uh, up and coming, and, and we're looking to do more of that in the region moving forward. So going back to the FinTech Times, um, you know, seeing, seeing the likes of my, my current base in Dubai, uh, Tel Aviv, obviously, Bahrain, uh, but also other countries as well in, in Africa, like Egypt, South, South, South Africa, Nigeria. There's such a huge active FinTech scene. And we've been very pleased to show it to the rest of our audience because the majority of our audience is not from here. The majority of our audience is non-Middle East and Africa, right? So, so we, we try to bridge it both ways. We try to showcase to the growing audience in Maya, what's happening amongst their region, but increasingly and, and importantly, educating those in London, Hong Kong, Singapore, New York City, about what's actually happening in uh, Dubai, Tel Aviv, Bahrain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and beyond, because obviously it's, uh, it's a new light. So hopefully that kind of sums up in terms of what, what I do with the FinTech Times, the FinTech Power 50, and then obviously with this kind of wider uh, theme, in terms of economic expert. Yes, and I'm sure you interviewed uh, lots of companies, uh, by the way, also mm. companies from here, from Israel. Um, what did you do recently that excited you? You know, it's a personal interview. I want you, you interviewed so many FinTechs and, and, and companies like that. Yeah. 
I yeah. So so you know, from the summer till now, you know, it's we're we're a fairly new player in the region, but we've been very blessed to have been active and people following us here. So our viewership has gone up, which has allowed me to specifically to interview a lot of people, as you said, both on camera uh, and and on on uh, online. But what was the most interesting one was actually this week, uh, Dubai. Actually, compared to much of the rest of the world, um, the 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 situation, the pandemic, um, has been well managed here, to the point that actually, as as everybody knows, that Dubai has actually opened up its economy. Uh, it's allowed tourists to come back from July. So actually, this past week uh, was actually the first B two B trade show that happened in Dubai since before COVID. So I actually physically not only attended, it's, it was called Seamless Middle East, but I was actually able to moderate two, pa uh, two keynote panels. So one of which was a keynote uh, presentation from Chris uh, Gledhill in London. So it was a virtual format. Hmm. His kid, his, uh, his young kid actually appeared out of nowhere. So that was, that was interesting. It was one of those uh, YouTube moments. And, and the other one with, uh, was with the executive vice president of Dubai International Financial Center's uh, FinTech Hive uh, with Raja. So that was the first time I did a face-to-face -face interview at a trade show since back in March before, you know, the wow. pandemic has, yeah. So that honestly, just because I went there, obviously, you know, we're all used to doing this, but physically. So, so, so we've all kind of gotten used to doing this in our living rooms or in front of the Burj Khalifa, <laughs> well, at least me. But, but in terms of actually physically doing it, face to face again was that was a, that felt really remarkable and it, it just felt like it was like the first time I ever did a panel again in a way because that just felt so surreal to be back at a trade show to be back at a at, on, on stage to be able to ask the audience a question to have a, a hybrid because it, it was a hybrid format right so it wasn't completely uh, physical because obviously not many people are still able to uh, travel due to this restrictions in their home countries but it was it was an interesting moment for me, and I think everybody that attended, obviously, just to see it face to face again, despite all the challenges the world is facing with COVID nineteen. But that was a that was a, a very significant event for me personally this week. I can totally relate, and I'm, I'm sure everybody is watching us right now really relate to your story because we, we want to we want to be there, we want to see uh, yeah. the tower behind you, we want to 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 go to the your coffee place. Uh, which is near you, <laughs> all these attractions over there and, and meet face to face. Uh, and you, you mentioned the DIFC FinTech Hive, right? Yeah, correct. Um, what is the, the, the DIFC FinTech Hive for people who don't know, because uh, they're also a part of, of the summit and I want to take the opportunity and, and tell us. Exactly. It was, it was kind of like my message earlier in terms of a lot of the stuff we say, uh, we actually have to educate because people take it for granted here because everybody knows what it is. but. So to take it a step back, uh, Dubai International Financial Center is, it's kind of like the, in a way, it's kind of like the Canary Wharf of what London is. So it's the premier financial uh, free zone in Dubai that caters to the financial services industry. And it is obviously has, alongside Dubai's growth, has made Dubai a hub, you know, not only just for the, the Middle East, but Middle East and Africa and South Asia. So in the financial services industry alone, uh, many of the world's largest banks are based there. Um, with the and, and I believe it's the stat of the 500 largest companies in the world, um, 200, I believe about 200 have a international office. And amongst those 200, oh, more, the majority have their Middle East and Africa regional office in Dubai. And the second place of that is uh, Johannesburg by not by a long shot. So, so Dubai, has grown remarkably so to that. So in terms of financial financial services, um, obviously a lot of the world's biggest banks have their off regional offices here. So like HSBC, uh, for example, has the regional office here for Minat, Middle East, North, North Africa, Turkey. Um, and then to answer your question specifically about FinTech Hive, so within DIFC, the Dubai International Financial Center, which is actually just over there. <laughs> um, I'll show it to you at the end really quick, but they have a, it's the, it, I believe it's the first uh, accelerator and fintech hub in the region. And it is the largest in the Middle East and North Africa that actually 50%, I believe it's 50% of all fintech companies in the region are actually based in that specific 
place called FinTech Hive. Wow. So it is a major player in terms of, of being an accelerator plus, I'll call it, and in, in, in being a hub for, for innovation yeah. in FinTech. Because I think what, you know, the FinTech Hive and other places, even Bahrain uh, and other countries, is it's not just, I was saying it earlier this week at, a, at this talk that I was moderating, it's you increasingly see a lot of innovation happening here as well. So, so those, so half of those companies that are based in FinTech Hive, for example, are producing local content. I'll say when I say local content, I mean local innovation in the FinTech space, and I think that's truly remarkable. Amazing. Um, yeah. For for somebody like me, I mean, I, I spent the last uh, let's say two months in talking to all these organizations in the UAE. Yeah. Uh, you're right next next to them. I I never flew there. I'm I'm sure I'm going to fly very soon and, and meet you in person. Because there's so many uh, summits that are coming, and uh, and again uh, there is a visa between Israel and the the UAE, so the visa is coming, I think, in uh, yeah, in December. Um, so, um, what what are the best practices that you can give these these companies who wants to to work, let's say, with a bank uh, in the UAE to work with the with the finance industry over there? Yeah, I want to sum it up as in three points. And by the way, before I sum it up in the three points, when you do come here, let's, we'll definitely have a coffee here, yeah? <laughs> oh, wow, wow. I, okay, okay, I like yeah, it. We'll definitely we'll have, we'll have, we'll have a coffee. Yeah? Ah, but, you're holding uh, a coffee cup already. Uh, exactly, it was coincidence, right? But uh, Great, great, I love it. Yeah, but just to answer your question, I would sum up in terms of doing business, not just for those that are from Israel, but from other countries who are new to the region, because also I'm also fairly new here as well. You know, so for me as well, I've kind of learned that a combination of advice and just being here and kind of learning it day by day. Um, the first thing I want to say out of the three points is the diversity that the region brings, especially in the Gulf. I mean, Dubai, for example, and the wider UAE, I believe it's the UAE has 80% of the population are expatriates. So meaning that 20% of the population are locals. So you have people from across the world. Um, and, and, you know, I was living in very international cities in the past, like London, uh, Chicago, I'm from Chicago and you know buenos aires and and here in madrid as well and here i it's really it's truly international so the first point i'm trying to make is in terms of doing business don't expect it to be one answer because you're you have people from across the world you know you have i believe it's 40 percent of the population here uh are indians just from india you have in the top five you know filipinos are also on that list uh bangladeshis pakistanis but then you also have uh, a huge British expatriate population here as well. A lot of Canadians, Americans, your other Europeans, probably Israelis pretty soon at some point. From, I think it's 200 nationalities, 200 languages are spoken here. So it's, it's, it's truly international in that sense. So it's not just like one representative of each nation. You have significant populations of each of them that are here. It coupled as well with, um, with obviously the locals. So point being is, you know, the first point I want to make is there isn't a, a specific answer because it's just so international. So I think being international, I've learned here is you have to learn how to be flexible with 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 the way you do things. You know, maybe um, you know, obviously relationships takes time in many cultures, uh, such as in in the Arab world. I've learned because I've also done a lot of work in Saudi Arabia. I've done a lot of work in the region uh, now, and 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 you know things are different. You know, the face to face interaction, the the just being patient takes time. But then, whereas with Americans, they're much more direct, as you as you know. Uh, and when I when I interviewed uh, Yuval and Galia from Team A FinTech, you know, they also gave advice and said that Israel is more direct. <laughs> so 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 it, it really changes by nationality, and and obviously, but we all kind of have this harmonious ecosystem where we all work together and and also do business together. So I think you have to be flexible. Number one, in terms of bearing that in mind that Dubai is really international. Uh, the second thing I want to say as well, in terms of doing business as well, is, you know, um, pay, be very patient as well, because obviously, you know, things don't just come overnight here as well. We are, even though it is international, we are in the Middle East, right? We are, well, yeah. in, in the Gulf. So, so obviously, it's, it, it does take time in terms of, of those relationships. And I know it's been difficult with COVID-19 for everybody across the world to see people face to face. But 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 just that the value the value of building a relationship um, is is truly important because I'm also Hispanic as well so like that that that's also very similar I think it's, it came from the Arabs because the Arabs controlled Spain for 800 years so a lot of things kind of 
mesh. So, so point being is actually, I, I kind of use that to like help me understand how to do, you know, the Arab culture in a good way, in the sense that, uh, you know, you're loud, you're, you, you love your family, but then also business takes time and the relationship is important. You're like, so, so, so I think the second thing as well is, like I was saying, is you have to be patient as well. You're not going to get a deal overnight. You have to build those relationships. And, 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 it's, and it is difficult to travel right now for many people, but, but the best you can do, you can, the best way you can. It, it, it truly does work wonders in that sense. Um, and, and probably the third thing I want to give advice to in terms of doing business is honestly just be yourself. You know, I think, I think here, but everywhere. I mean, but here, you know, because relationships are important. Um, they could spot gen being genuine. You know, I think if you're a genuine person and, and you're not showing that, then I think you can see that right away. Yeah. And, and I, and I think that's just advice anywhere really, but, but I think people, especially, you know, we were young at one point, I look young, but I'm actually older than what people think. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it, it, it's like you, you, you know, when you started when you were younger, you have to prove yourself. Right. But it's like, you lose your genuine, you, you lose your genuineness. You lose your kind of IP with you being you near, right? So, so my, my biggest piece of advice anywhere is just being yourself as well. And that's obviously valid here as well as in anywhere, anywhere else in the world. Yeah, yeah. You, you touched upon uh, the, the second part, uh, patience. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's hard for us uh, Israelis. We want to we wanna already have this relationship. We, wanna already, we feel like so close. Uh, and even it's a lesson for me. You know, I, I, I gained all these partners for this summit and the last summit. From the UAE, and I had to to explain people that I'm here for the long run. That I, I told them my story. I started with my story. I started by saying, um, "This is who we are. That's what I do. Um, I would love to develop this relationship with you." And I have all the time in the world uh, because uh, next year we we also have plans to do the fintech hackathon, you know about, and other plans that we have. And I wasn't rushing it uh, because because I knew this is a this is a cultural difference, you know, uh, and it doesn't work uh, as fast as sometimes people think. And al also because of the agreements, I guess so many people apply, right, to these organizations, right? So it's not just me, it's, it's a lot of other organizations who want to talk to all these ecosystem partners, right? Yeah, uh, exactly, and again, exactly. You know, you're absolutely, sorry, like, you're absolutely right. I think, I think it's just, like I said, you know, diversity, patience, and genuine. Just those three pieces of advice. I think you need to just bear that in mind. You meeting the rest of the world who is very unfamiliar with how to do business here, in the sense that it does, you know, it, it will it will happen if, if if it's mutually beneficial for both. But but you need to understand the diversity of, of Dubai and the region, the the patience you need to have, and obviously just being genuine as a person. Amazing, and I'm sure. By the way, after this uh, interview, a lot of uh, companies from Israel, from around the world, will we'll approach you uh, and, uh, and will want to follow you. What, what is the best way of, of uh, getting in touch with you, reading your content? Yeah. Um, well, you, well, now you know where I live. <laughs> so that's that's going to be easy to find. Uh, I don't live in it, but I live near it. Um, so I think, you know, so with the FinTech Times hat and the FinTech Power 50 hat, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always open to, to connecting with people. So... So obviously you're free to uh, reach out to me through those channels. And then obviously the work I, you know, the work that we, we both do is very visible. So they, I, they can easily find me. I, I, and I'm happy to, to connect with people, you know, um, on social media as well to, to, to see what, what mutual benefits any, anyone might have, or just even giving advice. I just want to say for people who don't know enough about the FinTech Times, and of course I encourage all of you uh, to read the content, to understand uh, the magnitude of, of these things, because you guys have relationships all over the world, uh, vast relationship with all the ecosystem players, with banks, with fintechs, uh, payment providers. Uh, you're organizing uh, roundtables and workshops and the power and the fintech power fifty, right? Exactly. So, so and hopefully next year in a, in a COVID free world, we'd be able to all across the world go back to events. So, so with both hats, both the FinTech Times and the Power of 50, um, to do more with everybody. And obviously here, um, like you were saying, we started, you know, myself specifically, uh, interviewing and talking to the banks and then obviously government entities. We'd like to do that more, not just here in Dubai, but obviously in Israel as well, and Bahrain, and, 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 and the rest of the African continent and, and beyond. 
uh, as what we do in, in Europe, North America, Asia. So we're very keen to build those relationships. And, and from the FinTech Times hat, to tell your story, right? To tell the story in terms of what's happening in, 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 in your country and whatever country you might be tuning in from, to tell it to the rest of the world. Because there are really interesting stories. And like and the biggest feedback that we've gotten in the positive ways, people telling us that, oh, we didn't know that this was happening in Africa. We didn't know this was happening in, in the Middle East. We didn't know this was happening in, in Turkey or Israel or wherever. So, so it's good that we're, we're, like I said, going back to how we, we've done it in twofold. is not only boosting the kind of stories in the region, but also telling it importantly to our audience who's largely from non-Maya about what's happening in, in, in your parts of the world. Amazing position. I, 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 I strongly agree with everything you just said. Uh, this is exactly why we did the, uh, the FinTech Nation Summit. You know, actually, the, the, the idea of, of having the FinTech Nation Summit came to me because of uh, the finance minister of the Netherlands. And okay. he, he said on a, on a manifesto uh, two months ago that he wants the Netherlands to brand itself as like to focus as a FinTech nation and yeah. to create these FinTech bridges, like you said. And he mentioned two places that he wants the Netherlands to focus on. One was Israel and the other was Singapore. So he said that these are the hubs that he would like his country to go and reach to. And this gave me the idea of, of creating a, a summit and a community around it that, that is called FinTech Nations. So what you are doing is super, super important, telling these stories of the FinTechs also in places uh, like Africa and other places where KYC sometimes take uh, you know, four days to, to onboard on a bank. Uh, to talk about the inclusivity, to talk about um, all the colors of fintech around the world, this is amazing. What, what you're doing is amazing, and I, I would love to to continue and be a, a partner of everything that you guys are doing. And uh, I know you also do the video interviews, and it, it's beyond uh, just uh, the articles. You're doing a lot of content. You're putting it out for the public, um, and uh, interviewing all these CEOs and, and banks from all over the world. So I encourage people to, to contact you and, and um, to be featured on, on one of your uh, articles and, 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 and content and workshops and, and seminars and, and events. Yeah. Um, so um, thank you very much for being a part of, the, of uh, the FinTech Week, for being a partner. And uh, I can't wait to, to discover more FinTechs together. Likewise as well. It was such a pleasure to, to finally meet you and to finally uh, speak to you and just to tell the story to everybody that's tuning in. So thank you. Amazing. Have a good day over there. Yeah, likewise. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Bye -bye.